Hi, JR. Hi there. Can you hear me well? Yeah, kind of. Uh, okay, so you're currently working on a large project. Can you tell me how this 28mm project started? Yes, I'll try. In 2004, I went in Kishimu family suburbs of Paris, page large photos of the inhabitants of that neighborhood. A year later, the riot started from there in 2005, and the first guy that burned in front of my picture bring my artwork in the front of the media suddenly. And I came back in that neighborhood in 2006 with my 28 millimeters, take their photo with their trust. So I portrayed them playing their own caricature, the way we see them from Paris. And I start placing them in the east of Paris, in the bourgeois areas of Paris. And you go from someone in the media that you can't recognize to someone that you can go and knock at his door. Because on the photo there is his name, his age, and even his building number. In the same media that I saw the suburb, I saw every day the Middle East conflict. So with my friend Marco, we decided to go there and just have a look by ourselves. With a French passport, we could go from both sides really easily. And we realized that we were the one who had to photograph them and face them face to face on both sides of the wall. Because so none of the Israeli or Palestinian could have done that project. We met Israeli teachers, Palestinian teachers, taxi drivers, students, photograph them face to face, play their own caricature, the caricature they see of the others through the media. And we place them on their wall without any authorization on both sides. And you know what? We thought that we would be kidnapped, that we would be arrested, that we would be evicted. And we just came back with some burn. The limit in that place was not where we think there. How can you imagine a guy in Ramallah accept that you place an Israeli face on his house, outside of his own door? And he will have to explain every day why he accepted to have an Israeli in front of his door. The real heroes are sometimes not where you think they are. They are right there in the street, everywhere around you. In the Middle East, I realized that it was the first time I confronted my work to people who didn't have museums around them. Arriving in Sierra Leone, Liberia, Sudan or Kenya, I started by Africa, I realized that the men were holding the street and I would have to confront them. They would be the curator of my exhibition. So I chose the woman subject because I think that the woman revealed the whole condition of the society. I want to confront those portraits with the street. I started to look for anonymous women that are daily heroes, photograph them and paint them in their own city and make their story travel. But they wanted their story to travel. They wanted to show another image of themselves. So I would travel with the photo. I would travel in another country and meet other women and highlight them in the same way. In Brazil, the first traveler of Brazil, of Rio, I pasted gigantic houses for Vidente. In Kenya, for example, I used vinyl on the rooftop so that it would protect them from the rain. In each place, the people had to find their own interest in the project. In places like Kenya or Brazil, the confrontation and the experience with the people were so strong that it made us want to come back and keep a link with those people. And there is even more places that I want to come back and continue, because sometimes the wave of the project can be read even when the photo is gone. You know, the photo is like paper, it's ephemeral, it goes with the time, but it always stays an image in your head. I'm not trying to change the world, but you know, when I see a smile up there in the favela or down there in Cambodia, in a way I feel like I feel my goal.